Chapter 26 How Gilfred was slain by Denkvat. Now when all were come upon the shore, the king Cain asked, Who will show us the right road through this land, that we go not astray? Then the sturdy folk are spake, For this I alone will have a care. Now behold, quoth Hagen, Both knight and squire, certs me think right, that we should heed our friends. With full monstrous tales I'll make you acquainted. We shall never come again to the Burgundian land. Two mermaids told me earlier in the morning that we should not come back. Again, I will now consell you. What ye do, ye must arm you, ye heroes, for we have mighty foes. Ye must guard you well, and ride in a warlike guise. I thought to catch these mermaids in a lie. They swore that none of us would come home safe and sound, save that chaplain alone. Therefore would I fain have drowned him today. These tidings flew from band to band, and valiant heroes grew pale from woe, as they began to fear a gruesome death on this journey to Etzel's court. Forsooth they had great need, when they had crossed at Mooring, where Elsa's fairy had lost his life. Hagen spake again, Sith I have gained me foes upon the way, we shall surely be encountered. I slew this same ferryman early on the morn today. Well, they watch the tale, now lay on boldly, so that it may go hard with Gelfort and else. Should they match our fellowship here today, I know them to be so bold that will not be left undone. Let the steeds jog on more gently, that none wern we be a fleeing on the road. This counsel I will gladly follow, quoth Gislier, the knight, but who shall guide the fellowship across this land? They answered, Let this Felker do, the valiant minstrel know both road and path. Ere the wish was fully spoken, men saw the doughty fiddler standing there well armed. On his head he bound his helmet, of lordly colour was his fighting gear. On his spear shaft he tied a token, that which was red. Later, with the kings, he fell into direst need. Trustworthy tidings of the ferryman's death were now come to Gelfort's ears. The mighty else had also heard the tale. Loth it was to both. They sent to fetch the heroes, who soon stood ready, and in a passing short time, as I'll let you hear, one saw riding towards them those who had wrought scathe and monstrous wounds and mighty battles. Full seven hundred or more were come to Gelfort, and when they began to ride after their savage foes, their lords did lead them, of a truth. A deal too strong they hasted after the valiant strangers. They would avenge their wrath. Therefore many of the lordlings' friends were later lost. Hagen of Tronig had well planned it. How might a hero ever guard his kinsmen better that he had in charge the rear guard, with his liegemen and his brother Dankvert? This was wisely done. The day had passed away, the night was come. For this his friends he feared both harm and woe, as beneath their shields they rode to the Bavarian land. A short time thereafter the heroes were assailed, and on either side of the highway, and in the rear hard by the herd, the beat of hoofs. Their foes pressed on too hard. Then spake hold Denkwert. They proposed to attack us here, so hind on your helmets for that be well to do. They stayed their journey, as though it might must needs be, and in the gloom they spied the gleam of the shining shields. Hagen would no longer keep his peace, and he called, Who chases us upon the highway? To this Gelfrat must needs give answer, and quoth the Margrave of Bavaria, We seek our foes, and have galloped on behind you. I know not who slew my ferryman today, but it doth rue me now, for he was a hero of his hands. Then spake Honig, Hagen of Tronig, And was then the ferryman thine? The fault was mine. He would not ferry us over, so I slew the knight. Forsooth I had great a need, for I had sheer gained at his hands my death. As meat I offered him gold and trappings, that he ferry me across to thy land, sir knight. This angered him so greatly that he smote me with a mighty oar, and at this wax grim and now, I seized my sword and fended him his anger with a grievous wound. Thus this hero met his death. 
I'll make amends, as doth think thee best. While I wist, spake Elfrat, when Gunther and his fellowship rode hither, that Hagen of Tronig would do us harm. Now he shall not live. The knight must stand for the ferryman's life. Over the bucklers, Gelfrat and Hagen crouched their spears for the thrust, and each would charge the other. Else and Dankwart rode full gloriously. They tested who they were. Fierce was this fight. How might heroes ever prove each other better? From a mighty thrust, Hagen was unhorsed by Gelfrat's hand, and his martingale snapped. He learnt what it was to fall and the crash of shafts resounded from their fellowship. Hagen, who from the thrust of four had come to earth, down upon the grass, sprang up again. I trow he was not gentle of mood towards Gelfrat then, who held their steeds, I would not. Both Hagen and Gelfrat had alighted on the sand and rushed together. Their fellowship helped thereby, and became acquainted with strife. I'll bet Hagen sprang at Gelfrat fiercely, the noble Margrave smote from his shield a mickle piece, so that the sparks did flew wide. Full nigh did Gunther's liegemen die therefrom. He began to call to Dankwart, O oh, help, dear brother, certes a hero of his hands hath matched me. He will not spare my life. At this hold, Dankwart spake, I will play the umpire here. The hero then sprang nearer, and with sharp sword, smote Gelfrat such a blow that he fell down dead. Else then would fain avenge the knight, but he and his fellowship parted from the fray with scathe. His brother had been slain, he himself was quite wounded, and full eighty of his knights remained with grim death behind upon the field. Their lord must needs turn and flight from Gunther's men. When those from the Bavarian land gave way and then fled, one heard the savage blows resound behind them. Those of Tronig chased their foes, for they were in passing haste, who had not weaned to make amends. Then spake out Dankfort, the knight in their pursuit, Let us turn soon on this road, and let them ride, or they be wot with blood. Haste we to our friends, this I advise you of a truth. When they were come again, where the scathe had happed, Hagen of Tronig spake, Heroes, prove now what doth fall us here, or whom we have lost in the strife through Gelfrat's wrath. For they had lost them who they must needs be wall, but they had been paid for dearly. For them a hundred or better from the Bavarian land were slain. From their blood the shields of the men of Tronig were dimmed and wetted. Through the clouds there partly broke the gleam of the shining moon. And as Hagen spoke again, Let none make known to my dear lords that we have wrought here today. Let them rest without care until the morn. When those who just had fought were now come again, the fellowship was full weary from the way. How long must we still ride? asked many a man. Then spake bold Dankwart, We may not find lodgings here. We must all ride until the day be come. The doughty Falker, who had charge of the fellowship, bade ask the marshal, Where may we find a place tonight, where our steeds may rest and our dear lord as well? And bold Dankwart answered, I cannot tell you that. We nigh not rest till it began to dawn. Wherever then we find a chance, will lay us down upon the grass. How loath it was to some when they heard this tale. They remained unmarked with their stains of warm red blood, and until the sun shot his gleaming light against the morn across the hills, then the king beheld that they had fought. Wrathfully the hero spoke. How now, friend Hagen, I ween? You scorn to have me with you when your wings grew wet with blood. Who hath done this? Then quoth he, This else did, who encountered us by night. We were attacked because of his ferrymen. Then my brother's hand smote Gelfrid down, and else soon escaped us. Constrained thereto by mickle need, a hundred of them, and but four of ours lay dead in strife. We cannot tell you where they laid them down to rest. For all the folk of the land learned soon that the sons of the noble Uta rode to court. Later they were well received at Pasu, and the uncle of the noble king, the bishop pilgrim, was blith of mood, as his nephews came to his land with so many knights that he bare them good will. They learned full soon. Well were they greeted too by friends along the way. Sith men could not lodge them all at Pasu, and they had to cross the stream to where they found a field 
on which they set up their pavilions and costly tents. And all one day they must needs stay there, and full night too, for what good cheer men gave them. After that they let to ride to Rudger's land, to whom the tidings were brought full soon. And when the wayworn warriors had rested them, and came nearer to Hunnish land, they found a man, asleep upon the border, from whom Hagen of Tronig won a sturdy sword. The same good knight, hight Eckwart, in truth, sad of mood he grew, that he lost his weapon through the journey of the knights, for they found Rudiger's marches guarded ill. Woe is me of this shame, spoke Eckwart, search this journey of the Burgundians ruth me full sore. My joy hath fled, sith I lost knight Siegfried. Alas, Sir Rudiger, how I have acted toward thee. When Hagen heard the noble warrior's plight, he gave him back his sword and six red armbands. These keep, Sir Knight, as a token thou art my friend. A bold knight thou art, though thou standest alone upon the marches. God repay you for your armbands, Eckward replied. Yet your journey to the Huns doth rue me sore. Because ye slew Siegfried, men hate you here. I can sell you in truth that ye guard you well. Now may God protect us, answered Hagen. These knights, the kings and their liegemen, have forsooth no other care, save for their lodgment, where we may find quarters in this land tonight. Our steeds be spent by the distant way, and our food runneth out. Quoth Hagen the knight, we find not anywhere for sale, and have need of a host, who through this courtesy would give us of his bread tonight. Then Eckwart made answer, I will show you a host so good, that full seldom have ye been lodged so well in any land, as here he may hap you. And ye will seek out Rudiger, ye doughty knights. He dwelleth by the highway, and is the best host that ever owned a house. His heart giveth birth to courtesy, as the sweet maid doth to grass and flowers. He is I, merry of mood, and when he can serve good knights. At this King Gunther spake, Will ye be my messenger, and ask whether my dearest friend Rudiger will for my sake keep us, my kinsmen, and our men? I will repay thee this, as best I can. Oh, gladly will I be the messenger, Eckward replied, and with a great wood will he got him on the road, and told Rudiger the message he had heard, to whom none such pleasing news had come in many a day. At Beckleren men saw a knight pricking fast, and Rudiger himself decried him, he spake upon the road yonder, hasteth Eckwart, the liegeman of Crimhield. He weaned the foes at Dunham scathe. Before the gate he went to meet the messenger, who ungrit his sword and laid it from his hand. The tales he brought were not hidden from the host and of his friends, but were straightway told them, and to the margrave he spake, Gunther, lord of Burgundian land, and Gristler his brother, and Gernot too, have sent me hither to you, each of the warriors tendered you his service. Hagen and Folker, too, eagerly did the same in truth. And still more I tell you, that the king's marshal sendeth you by me the message, that the good knights have passing need of your lodgment. Rudiger answered with smile, Now well is me of these tales, that the high-born kings do wreck of my service. It shall not be denied them, merry and blith will I be, and they come into my house. Dankwart the marshal bade let you know whom ye shall lodge in your house with them, sixty doughty champions, and a thousand good knights, and nine thousand men-at-arms. Merry of mood grew Rudiger. He spake, Now well is me of these guests, that these noble warriors be coming to my house, whom I have served as yet full seldom. Now ride ye forth for to meet them, my kinsmen and my men. Knights and squires now hide then to their houses. It thought them right, which their lord did bid, and all the more they hasted with their service, as yet Lady Gutland wist it not, who sat within her bower. <laughs>